Namaste. Good morning. Namaste, Shandla Didi. Namaste, all. Welcome to the morning session. Sabhi ko namaste. Good morning and welcome. So we are on to UHB 3. We have started with UHB 3 yesterday. We discussed the course overview in lecture 1. And we had discussed about referring to our natural acceptance specifically. Um, yesterday, we had decided that we will try to refer to our natural acceptance during the day in the various interactions with people. We mentioned that natural acceptance has to do with the purpose. So if we are doing anything, if we are saying anything, interacting with anybody else, if we ask the question why we are doing it, then with that purpose, we can check with the natural acceptance and see if we are in line or not. We'll discuss this assignment from yesterday and then we'll move on to lecture two. Ma'am, we will be having a one class uh, of uh, business environment in Universal Business School in Kajat. At that time, uh, we had an external environment topic and we requested our authority to give us a permission to go up out of the classroom and uh, teach this particular topic to the students. And uh, at that time, the uh, authority thought for a second for a while that they should not give us a permission because it will discard the uh, mutual understanding of the students in the classroom decorama. But still, I struggled a lot and we got a permission from the higher authority. And uh, then we took the students out of the classroom. We toured them in the small city of Kajot in Mumbai. We showed them the open market, open hut over there, weekly market also, and a uh, <clears throat> number of the things in the surroundings of that hut, that how the exchange of things has been done, how the purchasing and everything was been done over there. And literally, when we came back into the classroom, the students were very happy. I think, you know, it really give them a lot of things from the natural acceptance that how we, the faculty can teach them beyond the curriculum. Yeah, your example of, you know, how one can teach to students is very nice. And, you know, for teachers to actually get the students in that environment and see it for themselves is i think a good way what we are referring to is trying to refer to our own natural acceptance within ourselves so it's not about activities that are happening with the others but while doing these activities what am i thinking what am i feeling why am i doing what i'm doing and do I think that this is in line with my natural acceptance or not? If I ask this question, that you now as a very gross example, what you took the students out and you helped them to see something. Now, if I am doing this so that I can help the student understand, then it is certainly in line with my natural acceptance. Them, right yes, because i want to understand and i can see that the student wants to understand so i try to do things in a way that the student will understand better yes but if i do this so that you know at the back of my mind this thing is there that if i do this the students will like me more uh, students are likely to praise me or I will get some recognition in the college because the students convey good things about me. Now here, you know, my purpose is different. Can you see this? I'm not saying for your, you know, individual case. I'm just saying in general, to try to understand. Yes, ma'am. So there, my focus has shifted. My focus is, my purpose is something else. Now I have to see, is this in line with my natural acceptance? So now it will be that I want to be special. 
I want to get the right feeling from the other, rather than having the right feeling within myself. This, I'll be able to see that this is not in line with my natural acceptance. Here, you know, um, although the activity is the same outside, yes. but what am I thinking about? What am I feeling with this activity? That makes all the difference to my own happiness, to my own harmony. Slowly as we go along, we'll see that any time our feeling and thought are not in line with the natural acceptance, we have a little disharmony within, and that can keep, you know, accumulating and creating trouble for us later. But that is just um, an example. So this is how we would like to. See for our referring to our natural acceptance is to checking with ourselves. What is my purpose in doing this? Yeah, does that make sense? Yes. Ji, namaste. Yes. So I just wanted to share one thing. Uh, yesterday I was going through with some workplace politics where I had recommended some names for being the judge in the college fest. Right, and uh, some of the colleagues, uh, some of the colleagues misunderstood it that uh, I did not want to work and I did not want to be the judge. So that is why I am giving their name for being busy while I can work on my college things, and they will be sitting there for like five six hours. And I got to know this through the students. Who took that recommendation list to the faculties? So I was I was a lot tr troubled, and I even went to a lot of extent that I was you know I I started blaming on how petty things can be, and but eventually I I was not feeling um, you know, I was not really in a state of harmony to say. And I started thinking that, you know, I I usually do that, but yesterday I did that on purpose. I dislocated myself, and I thought if I was in their shoes, and the students would approach me instead of my colleague, instead of my colleague telling me that okay, you will be a judge. If the students would approach me, even I would, you know, uh, start to think that there's some re some some other reason behind it. Yes. Um, you know that that was that was one feeling that okay even the other you know and think or you know the other is not always willing to be against me maybe maybe I caused that misunderstanding yes. I was not blaming myself initially in the starting of the day but by the end of the day I really thought that I I myself would have done that. And not caused this trouble in their mind. So that was very nice self reflection, this uh, Mahimji. I think, you know, what is significant here is that something we mentioned via the students that we could have directly communicated, perhaps. You see how misunderstandings happen. Yeah, it was very small. It was, a, and, I, and I went to a lot of extent. Especially when I got to know about it, I I was like, I've done so much for them, and how can they? <laughs> like this is so it ridiculous. Is. We build it up more and more and more within us. <laughs> yeah. you, know, you can see for yourself why you wanted them to be that judge, and if it is for their own growth and for their betterment, then you had the right thing in mind. You know, it was naturally acceptable for you to help the other. But because there was some miscommunication, or perhaps we could have expressed it to them ourselves in a better manner, then the miscommunication may not have happened. But even so, once the miscommunication happened, now it was a very small thing, but we, you spent the whole day becoming in disharmony, isn't it? So somewhere you were able to reflect on this 
and you were able to see what you said. I put myself in their shoes and so on. This is what we need to do. We need to look at things from the other perspective and see that the intention was pure on my side and on their side. But there was a lack of understanding of that. There was a lack of competence. We misinterpreted. There was a miscommunication. Therefore, this problem happened. So I neither need to blame myself nor I need to blame them. I just need to look at things in the right perspective. And when I do that, I will try to find ways of, um, you know, one is the moment I realize that I did a mistake, that disharmony will come down within me. Or, you know, that I could have done things a little bit different. And then when I communicate this to the other, the other also is in harmony. So this, uh, this is a very good example, Mahimji. And this is what we were trying to refer to when we said referring to the natural acceptance. So in lecture two, what we are going to do is we are going to briefly talk about what we got from lecture one and from UHV2, in fact, because we have most of us or many of us have done UHV2 and then come for this or registered for this. So if we can just go back to UHV2 and see what was our learning from there. And if we evaluate and see what we have understood from UHV2, then we will go forward and see what, where we are trying to reach or what, what we are trying to do through UHV3 in our further evolution. So these two things we will look at in lecture two, where we are now after UHV2 and where we aim to be after UHV3. What is the uh, expectation or what is our uh, goal for that? So a little bit of background about, you know, when we uh, went through UHV2, we saw that as a human being, we discussed this when we talked about our aspirations, that we all want to live a happy life, a fulfilling life. We all have some desires and we try to fulfill those desires through various programs that we set for ourselves, isn't it? Now, when we did that in UHV2, we also talked about how even though it may seem that all our desires are very different, that we all have different desires. But when we come down to the root of why we want to do that or we want to have that, why we have that desire, then we find that at the root for all of us, our basic aspiration is the same, that we all want to be happy. We may think that our happiness will be, will lies in a particular desire, but ultimately what we really want out of that desire is we want to be happy. Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing it. We wouldn't be having that desire, isn't it? So, in uh, UHV2, we were trying to understand that our basic aspiration behind any desire is for happiness. So, we must rightly understand this happiness and we must understand what is happiness. We must understand how to be happy and then we can decide on the program correctly for being happy. Otherwise, if we don't understand what is happiness and how to achieve that happiness, we are going about that program 
without really knowing if it will ultimately reach to my happiness or not. Like that train we were giving the example of. We are focusing on the various things in the train. The seats should be like this. The food should be like this. The you know, uh, cleanliness, the hygiene, all of that we are focusing on. It should have curtains and so on. But we are not focusing on where the train is going. This is important. This we tried to see to some extent in UHB2. So now we are going to look further. And we are going to try to see this whole thing in more depth in UHV3. In, in UHV2, we saw that as a human being, we are a coexistence of self and body. At least we got this as information. We may not have even thought about that earlier. We may have assumed we are the body. So that to see that we exist as a human being and as a human being, we want a fulfilling life. We have some desires and we are trying to fulfill those desires. So we have a variety of desires. All of us may have different desires. But ultimately, to see that all of us at the root, our root desire, we can say, or our basic aspiration or why we have that desire is because we think it will lead to happiness. And ultimately what we want is to be happy. And therefore we need to understand happiness. We need to understand what is happiness and how to achieve it. Then we can make a program for it and work on it. So this is what we tried to do in UHB2. Now we'll do a little more in-depth study in UHB3. So, in UHV3, we'll be trying to see, see in the UHV2, we saw that, or we got it as information that the human being is coexistence of self and body. So, earlier we may have thought we are just the body. After UHV2, perhaps we were able to uh, see within ourselves that there is a self also. So I am not just the body, I am self plus body. Now in UHV3, our focus will be on the self. To see that, you know, these aspirations I have, this happiness that I am searching for, the fulfillment of this happiness, this is all going to be taking part in this self. This is happening in the self. So, in fact, self is the one that is central to my existence. The body is not as important for this. The body I use as a tool when I want to interact with the outside world, when I want to express myself, communicate things to others, and so on. But much of the time I spend just being with myself, thinking something, reflecting on something, um, feeling something and that is leading to my happiness and unhappiness like we heard from IMG just now. So entire day we might spend being a little uncomfortable, a little unhappy you know, based on one incident that took place within a few seconds but then we it was the cause of our unhappiness for the entire day. And I really want to be happy. That is my basic aspiration. So all of this unhappiness was in the self, isn't it? This didn't have much to do with the body. So in this course, we will be focusing on this. We will be able to see that the self is the one that is central to my existence. The body is just like a tool. Yes. Then we will also look at nature and existence. That this pattern in nature and existence is one of coexistence. So just as we saw that the self is central to my existence as a human being, 
we may be able to see that coexistence is what is central to this entire existence. And everything that you are seeing in this nature, in this existence, is only a natural expression or an unfolding of this coexistence. It may not seem that way. It may seem like everything is so different. Everything has so much variety and it's all separate units. And But when we look um, in depth, we try to see at the base, we, we may be able to see by the end of this course that it is coexistence that is central to everything in this existence. That is the entire pattern. That is what is keeping things in harmony in nature. I decide the feeling that I have and whether it leads to my happiness or not. But, you know, if I see for myself, the moment I have some conflict within me or some disturbance in my feeling, that harmony is disrupted. This is also you can consider an expression of coexistence, that this is how it is, the pattern is, that relationship, that harmony with every other unit, whenever that I disrupt that in myself, I am disturbed. But we'll go into this deeper. For now, we'll just try to see that this is one of the goals of UHV3, that to look deeper into the nature and existence and see this pattern of coexistence that is there. And that everything that I see, I can see that it is an expression of that coexistence. Then the third goal is to understand what is my role in all of that. After all, one is to understand things the way they are. That is my need. I want to know. But beyond that, do I do something with it? I don't have to do anything with the coexistence because it is already there and it is fine the way it is. But I do need to understand it. And when I understand it, what it means is, I already have a natural acceptance for coexistence, but my feeling and thought may not be in line. And whenever my feeling and thought are not in line with this coexistence, I get disturbed. I am unhappy. So I will be able to see that within myself. So therefore, not only to understand the coexistence, but also to have the feeling and thought of coexistence in myself. And not just to have feeling and thought of coexistence, but also to bring it in my living, in my interaction with nature, with you know, other human beings. And you'll find that is a natural flow. That once you have the feeling and thought of coexistence, it will naturally flow into your behavior. You don't have to make effort for it. So the pattern is already there. We have to understand it. We have to live by it. And in order to live by it, we have to have our feelings and thoughts in line with it. So these will be the goals of UHV3. First, to see that it is the self that is central to my existence as a human being. Then when I look at nature and existence, to see that the pattern in nature and existence is one of coexistence. And third, to see what is my participation, what is my role in this. I have to understand this coexistence and have the feeling and thought of coexistence and then to live in coexistence with other human beings and with the rest of nature. Did you have a question regarding what I just uh, uh, Good morning, about? madam. Good morning. Yes, ma'am, I have a question, madam. Uh, yes. Once uh, you were just uh, talking about the goal of this Yoshvi 3, 
Uh, okay. Just can you more elaborate about the existence and the coexistence? Are they related to each other, madam? Yeah, what we are saying is that the pattern in existence is one of coexistence. As we go further, it will become more clear how or why we are saying that there is coexistence in existence. Like as a small example, things flourish in nature. Right? Yes, madam. If you go to a forest, you see that nobody is tending to the plants. Nobody yes, is watering the plants or doing anything. Nobody is putting manure. But yet plants are flourishing. Isn't yes, it? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Trees are there. Small shrubs are there. Small plants are there. Everything is growing and growing wild. Yes, ma'am. So this is the pattern. Like... Yes. Even though there are tall trees, there are also small shrubs, there are very small grass, everything is flourishing in the presence yes, of one another. So this would be one example. Yes, ma'am. Yeah? Yes, ma'am. But Thank we'll you. look into it in more detail. When we okay, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, we'll uh, go further. Yeah. So our purpose and program when we make our purpose and program, how do we make our purpose and program? So either we understand things the way they are or we assume something about everything that we see around us and then we make some program, some purpose we have, isn't it? So there are two possibilities. Either we understand things the way they are or we assume something about things the way they are. This assumption may be in line with what it is really, or it may be something very different. Our assumption may be very different. So, whatever we are seeing, so what is it that is important for me for deciding my purpose, my program, First of all, what is my assumption about myself as, my, as a human being? Am I able to see the reality or am I assuming something about the reality of myself as a human being uh, that may not be in line with you know, what it actually is? So my assumption about the human being, it is important for me to see that. The other thing is the existence because everything in the existence is surrounding me. It's there. I am embedded in this existence. I can't keep myself out of this existence. So I must understand this existence correctly. So am I seeing it correctly or am I assuming something about it which is not true? This is something significant that I have to look at. Uh, good morning, Didi. Just you have spoken that when we are not following coexistence or when we are not with the coexistence, we are in trouble. We are in uh, unhappy. Are unhappy. So mm -hmm. my question is how to ascertain coexistence in self? What thoughts we should continue that we always realize the presence of coexistence in our self so that our happiness may uh, ascertain continuously. That is our desire. Yeah, I'll very briefly comment on it. Essentially, the pattern in existence, when we say coexistence, what is there in existence is this, you know, relatedness between all the units. There is a harmony between all the units. Things are in order, right? Even though I am not, you know, physically going and doing something, there is a certain pattern, things are going on. Every day the, you know, the day dawns, night happens, plants are growing, there is food in abundance, you know, so many things are there. So, one is the relatedness, the other is the harmony, and then when we say coexistence, means every unit is coexisting with every other unit without trying to disrupt it or break it down 
or something like that. They are all there existing together. So this pattern, if we can have the feeling of relationship within us, the feeling of harmony and the feeling of coexistence, then we are in line with it. Anything that is different from it, if we have a feeling of opposition, even for one moment, it is bound to lead to unhappiness or disturbance within us. We may not notice it, but as we start paying attention, we will be able to notice that and we will be able to bring ourselves in line. But we'll discuss it more when we um, come to the exercises, yeah? Okay, Didi, thank you very much. So, these two things that we said, you know, we may have assumptions, certain assumptions about as a, who am I as a human being and what is this existence. So, before, even before we did UHV2, we may have had some assumptions about things. Now, you know, after UHV2, we may have changed, our assumption may have changed. That is the thing about assumptions, right? I hear something, my assumption changes. I see something, my assumption may change. So before UHV2, we may have had some assumptions. And after UHV2, we may have changed some of those assumptions. So let's look at some of these things. So here you can see that these are possibilities. Of course, take it as a proposal. Nothing is uh, being said like this is how it is, but it is possible that before UHV2, our assumption about the human being may have been that I am body. Even though I may have read in many places about a soul or atma or something like that, but in my living, I may have been living as if I am the body. And when we talk of material, uh, when we talk of existence, like in science, when we talk of the existence, we talk of it as matter, material. So that may have been my assumption, that I am body as a human being. And this whole existence is material. So if I have these assumptions, how will I see my purpose? Of course, I want happiness. That is there. I want to be happy. But if I think I am body, I will try to get happiness through the body. Isn't it? Or if there are other human beings, I will expect that they should have the right feeling for me. And whenever they don't have the right feeling for me, I become unhappy. So I may have assumed that because I want happiness, I want to have it through the body. Therefore, how will it be through the body? I have all these sense organs. I try to indulge in the sensation so that it gives me happiness. So I might eat tasty food. I might want to go and see movies because I think that will give me happiness. And it seems to give some sort of pleasure for some time, but then it's gone. Even the food, you know, you eat the food. Yes, it tastes good. But the taste lasts for how long? The moment that food is gone from the tongue down to the throat, the taste is gone. But I want to be happy in continuity. So I keep searching for that again and again and eat more and more so that I can have that taste again and again. Because I think this is what is giving me the happiness. Therefore, we have problems like you know, obesity and so many health issues and all of that. So my purpose becomes trying to get happiness through the body. And what becomes my program then? Because I think everything is material and now I have to get happiness through all of this. So I try to get gather more and more physical facility. I may have many clothes in my cupboard, but 
I see a nice dress and I think, oh, this will look good. And uh, let me get it. I don't think about the fact that what is the purpose of the clothes? The purpose of the clothes is to protect the body. But I am confused because I myself associate clothes with some respect because I am thinking I am the body. And when I associate it with respect and I want respect as the self, my need is there for respect. I'm trying to fulfill it through different material things, through the body. So I accumulate physical facility and I try to, uh, I think that this will ultimately lead to my happiness. But we looked at UHV2 and we saw that as a human being, I am not just this body. In fact, I am a coexistence of self and body. So that was one major shift in our assumption, isn't it? Earlier, it may have been that, yes, we've heard this concept somewhere, but how does it connect up with me and my life? We may not have been able to see that. But now we may be able to see that, you know, when we studied it, the needs of the self, the needs of the body, the activities of the self, the activities of the body, and so on. That I am not just this body. In fact, I am a coexistence of self and body. So one major shift. Also, when we looked at existence, we talked about how the existence is not just material. There is, There are all these units and these many, 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 many variety of units are submerged in space. And we could classify them as units that are of consciousness and units that are material. So now that assumption that we, uh, you know, this existence is material may have changed to this existence has consciousness units also and material units also, and they are submerged in space. At least we have it as information. So at least our assumption has shifted. Then when we look at the purpose, we discussed this in UHV2, that we want to be happy in continuity. We want to be prosperous. And we also learned something very important, that this happiness that we are searching for outside is actually a state of harmony within myself. So when I am in harmony within myself, I am happy. But if I am searching for it outside and I myself am in disharmony, then it doesn't matter how good the outside is. So if you have a fight with somebody you love, you care for, no matter how good a place you go to, if you are not comfortable inside, do you enjoy that place? Or would you rather, you know, not care about that place but want to be in harmony within? What do you think? If you can put this in the chat. Would you care for the place or would you care for the harmony within? Supposing you have to go to the best location possible, but you are disturbed. Would you prefer that or would you prefer the harmony within? We can see that we want the harmony within. So now that shift happens, when you see, okay, ha Happiness is to be in a state of harmony. So if I want to have continuous happiness, what do I need to do? I need to understand this harmony within myself and also understand this pattern that is there around me. So if I am you know, in harmony, can I have the family in harmony? Can I have the society in harmony? 
and of course in nature and existence the harmony already exists that pattern of coexistence is already there and i don't need to do anything for it but i do need to understand so this shift may have happened in us through uhv2 isn't it so this we'll refer to as shift 1 so uhv2 was trying to focus on starting this process of self exploration in all of us so at least we start looking within at least we start seeing what it is what is it that we really want what is it that we need to do to be happy so once we started this process of exploration we came to this realization perhaps that human being is not just the body it is a coexistence of self and body so this shift happened so earlier this purpose what we may have assumed when we thought human being was body we may have tried to get all this happiness from outside not from inside so you know this i am okay you are not okay meaning problem is not with me problem is outside and we may still be having that that assumption can be so deep rooted that we may still be going with that assumption many a time so and so disturbed me so i am saying the problem is not with me the problem is with that person because he disturbed me and so on you know the traffic was there naturally i got disturbed or i got angry because i got late because of the traffic so we always find things outside which are a cause of unhappiness in us but is it so so if i want to be happy in continuity do i need to make that effort to change everything outside or do i need to make that effort to change something within myself so that shift perhaps has started to happen i can see after uhv2 perhaps that because i am a coexistence of self and body this you know need of mine to live with continuous happiness this is a need of myself it is there in the self right so where will i need to make effort for it i have to make effort within myself if i want to be happy i want to be in harmony because we said happiness is harmony then i need to be in harmony within myself otherwise i am bound to be unhappy so when we looked at earlier we were seeing all this physical facility all this will give me happiness now i may be able to see that ultimately physical facility is required only to nurture the body to protect the body to utilize the body rightly not for getting happiness happiness is something that is my need and its fulfillment is also within myself not outside so if i look at you know physical facility being required only for the body then i can see that it is required in some limited quantity it's not unlimited earlier because i was trying to fulfill my need of the self through the body i thought all of this is required with no limit you have to keep accumulating because you never know some point i will be happy in the future when i have enough but what is that enough we may not be aware of so we ha- may have been gathering more physical facility without paying attention to how much is enough but after uhv2 we may have been able to see this 
that physical facility is required for the body so its need is very much limited and it can be defined we can put a cap on it so now my program shifts from trying to gather more and more physical facility just making sure i have sufficient and then focusing on understanding i mean so many of us right now are here 225 people are here right now why are we doing this we are not getting any physical facility out of it but we want to know we want to be happy we want to understand we want to be in harmony so this is what we are doing so now our program shifts a little bit so this is what we are referring to as shift 1 now with this i think we'll stop here and uh, we'll take any one or two question yes yes ma'am good morning ma'am good morning and good morning all of you so ma'am uh, my doubt is here <clears throat> many times we used to live in assumptions because whatever we see we thought that it is a reality but the reality might be different mm -hmm. and uh, we assume that whatever we see that is only the reality and that's what the problem with uh, because of which only we tend to behave many times mm -hmm. and how to ensure this process of knowing i mean yeah, how to know with that in yeah. with us yes so this is what we are trying to make effort for here yes yes ma'am go into uhv3 we yes, will try to see the reality the way it is essentially what do we mean by understanding is to see things the way they are not to oh, assume yes. something different isn't it oh uh, yes ma'am yes ma'am so, yes. yes. as we go into the exercises you will see that we are going to go into this process of trying to see things the way they are understanding things the way they are not just assuming something so it will become very clear once we go into the exercise yes ma'am <clears throat> thank you ma'am thank you thank you so with this in view today we can reflect on this you know as a human being what am i and then i have the words that i am coexistence of self and body but is it showing up in my living what do i think about the existence how am i trying to get this happiness what is my program to try to be happy these things if we can reflect on for today we'll take your reflections on this tomorrow namaste namaste didi thank you so much for the enriching session